welcome everyone. My name is Ann Mitchell, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's sem or today's webinar on refunds automation setup. In today's webinar, James Armington, our account manager here at RunSignUp, is going to highlight the quick hits and things to consider when setting up automatic automatic refunds. We'll get started here shortly, but first. I'd like to go over a few quick housekeeping notes to keep everything running smoothly during today's webinar. You'll, you will have the ability to minimize or maximize the control panel using the arrow button in the upper left corner. As for questions, even though attendees will be muted throughout the session, we do encourage you to submit them using the question pane on the control panel. We will get to them as time allows. If your question doesn't get answered during today's session, somebody will follow up with you. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be shared with all registrants after the webinar. So there's no need to write down notes or take furious notes during the webinar if you would just prefer to watch and learn. This is a great opportunity to participate and ask questions. I will be monitoring the questions and we'll answer them or we can address them as a group during the uh, Q&A session at the end. So with that said, I'd like to introduce James Armington and the account manager with Run Signup who will be presenting today's webinar. Take it away, James. Thanks, Ann. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to Refund Automation Setup. Um, this is gonna be a really great topic here to kind of get you guys some more information and experience with how to use our tools that deal with refunding people automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut my webcam off. I just wanted to show you I'm a real person. Hello. And uh, cut that off there so you guys can see the slides a little better. Cool. So let us get into it. What are automatic refunds? Um, these are tools or these are things that run signup can set up or you guys can can offer, uh, turn turn active for your participants to receive a refund back to the card that they registered on. Um, just a quick high level thing for all of these refunds, at no point in time if you set up any of these tools are we gonna send back more money than what your customer paid. So these, these tools are really great to use, they're safe to use, and you're not gonna just be given away more money than a participant has spent. So the various tools that I'll talk about today um, that uh, deal with automatic refunds are things like referral rewards, um, group team pricing, participant management options, um, like you know, requesting a refund through their run signup profile, um, donation discounts, and fundraiser rewards. So you can see the various navigation paths here to find those if you just want to use your admin toolbar and find them, or you can use the menu search bar in the upper left-hand corner of your toolbar and type in any of these little topics. So and you'll you'll find them. So Let's get into the first one here, the referral rewards. Um, this is tied to our referral tracking tool, which um, is something that you can set up um, that allows a specific link to be issued to a, a participant when they register. And they'll receive notice of this when they complete their transaction. They'll have a, like a special link that's tied to their registration ID that they can share with their family and friends and then run sign up, can track who has registered through their specific link. And because of that tracking, we can actually set up rewards for them to encourage people to sign up and encourage them to talk about our race. So the first step for setting up referral rewards is to set up your referral tracking. You can see that on the, the first screenshot here. Uh, and then down below, you can set up your refunds. And so each event that you have on run sign up in this race can have um, different refunds set up for it. So you'll set this up for each, for each event that you have. And you can set up multiples if you want. So if you have different levels of refunds, you can set up multiple refunds. Um, but this instance, we're just looking at one setup here. So we are allowed to customize the amount, the number of refund that triggers, or the number of referrals that trigger a refund, uh, the amount of the refund, and the frequency of the refund. So in my example here, um, I have a cutoff date for registrations at February 9th. So in order to receive or in order for these for referrals to be tracked and count towards these refunds, they have to register before the 9th of February. Um, I'm giving a refund in this example for three referrals uh, and you're gonna get a $15 refund. Um, and then using the advanced option, and I don't see a lot of people 
Um, this, this is commonly missed when I'm reviewing races, so it's a very small advanced options box, but if you click that, you can actually toggle this to continue to refund somebody for referring. So um, I have this set up to continue to refund people $15 for every three registrations using a referral code. Um, that's a really good thing to do because it encourages people to continue to refer your race after they receive their first refund. Um, I don't want them to stop. I want them to keep sharing my race and keep building my registrations. Um, but I also have this set up to stop refunding after they've received five refunds. So all that's customizable for your needs. Um, at the bottom, you can uh, trigger an ensure registration balance. And we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later, a lot of our automatic refund tools have an insurer registration balance, and basically this allows me to decide whether or not I want to allow a participant to trigger this refund um, if they have received, you know, refunds in the past. So if that is set to zero, somebody can trigger this refund all the way until they've, you know, been refunded all the money that they paid for their race. Um, I have this set at 20, so. You know, once someone has only $20 left in their registration um, balance, they're not going to be able to earn this refund anymore. Um, and we'll talk about that more again, like I said. Um, so that's uh, that's a common thing for automatic refunds. And then there's a final checkbox on the referral awards to uh, not include add-on purchases in the refundable amount. Um, I really, you know, if you refunded, if you, you know, referred a bunch of people, but you bought like a pint glass that I was selling, um, I'd love to give you your registration feedback, but I owe some money for that pint glass because I ordered, you know, 500 of them and I don't really want to give that back. So um, I, I made a checkbox there just to not include that in the uh, in the refund amount. So that's referral rewards. Uh, let's get into the next topic here, which is uh, group team refunds. Um, so like referral tracking, that's done on an individual basis where every individual registrant has their own personalized link. Um, I can also set up refunds for groups. Um, and we just did a great uh, blog post and webinar on why races should enable teams in their races. And it's because people love to race as teams and people love to get their buddies together and come and join a race together and, and feel like they're running together. And so with run signups group uh, team pricing tools, I can reward people for having uh, large groups. And so uh, the first step towards um, rewarding groups based off of size is setting up your group types so you know these are these can be you can set up as many group types as you as you need for each individual race um, but that's kind of the bucket that's going to hold the teams that are created so um, you can set those up for different events and whatnot but that's the first step you got to have a group type set up to be able to create groups um, and then once i have that set up i can set up my group pricing and so for this specific part, we'll talk about the refund process because that is the automatic refund portion of the group pricing uh, tools. Um, group refunds trigger when a um, specific member of a group registers. So in my example down below, um, I have this refund set up to trigger when the 10th member of a team or a group joins. Um, that's going to trigger a refund to the first nine people. So this is commonly commonly missed. It's a uh, it's a it's kind of a point of confusion. So we'll explain a little bit more about that in just a moment. But uh, you set your you set your triggering limit right there. So after member number after registrant number ten joins, the first nine folks will get a refund. Uh, you can specify the event that is eligible for this, uh, the refund amount, and then another insure registration balance. And that's again that's how I set my refund limits. Um, the it might not make sense for a group to receive, for each event in a, in a group to receive the same refund because I might have people who registered for a 5K, people who registered for a 10K on the same team. So be cognizant of that when you're setting these up and making sure your refunds make sense for the event that the, uh, that the participant registered from. So best practice alert. This is uh, last kind of a screen that, um, that I, I wanted to share with you. Um, adding, group refunds is a is a great way to encourage people to reach a certain size but it doesn't it only pertains to the folks who have registered already on that group so like i mentioned before in that example once the 10th person registers for a team the first nine people 
will be refunded, but that 10th person is sort of left out. And so is the 11th and the 12th and the 13th. Um, so it's best practice to combine your group refunds with group member pricing. And that's another group pricing scheme that we have here. Because I want to refund the first nine people of my team or the first five people or whatever your limit is for your group size that you want to incentivize people to, to reach. But I also want to continue to have them share. I want to I want them to bring more people to the race. I want I want I want bigger numbers and I want more smiling faces on my start line. So um, using group member pricing, I can set it up so that, you know, yeah, the first nine people registered registered at a, disc, at a discount. But once that 10th person is registering, they'll get provided a discounted price on their cart. And so will the 11th and 12th person and 13th person. So it's best practice to set up group refunds and group member pricing together so that you can continue to reward groups um, for hitting a certain group size by refunding the original participants and then providing discounted pricing for the future registrants. Um, and you're gonna want to make sure that these two boxes here that I have highlighted on my screen match. Um, because group pricing will provide or group member pricing will provide a discounted price for um, that 10th member who didn't receive the refund and the 11th member and then group refunds will refund everyone who came before those guys so um, it's best just to make sure that the details box of your group member pricing and then the refund setting uh, number match so that you can ensure that you're refunding the correct registrants and then you're providing discounted pricing for everyone Who's, uh, who's coming after that refund. Okay, so those are two um, spots where you can um, encourage people to share your race and to register and, uh, and kind of become ambassadors for your, for, your, uh, for your race. But we also have participant management refunds. So if I you know, get a lot of refund requests, as I know a lot of our race directors do, and it's, you know, it's always kind of fills up our inboxes. Um, if I want to allow my participants to log into their run sign up profile and request a refund for themselves the same way that they would maybe make an event transfer or a race transfer, um, they can do that or I can set that up. You can see here, these are kind of the, the pathway and what they could use to, to do that. Um, so yeah, we can enable refunds for people to self-serve refund themselves. Um, it's handy because it speeds things up for you guys and I can charge a processing fee for it. So, you know, maybe I want to charge 10 bucks and yeah, I'll give you some of your money back. Um, I can set a cutoff date. So once I've er ordered my merch and once I've ordered, you know, something, I can say, okay, no more refunds after that spot. Um, can do a couple of, uh, of adjustments there. Um, we can also set it up so that there are, you know, percentage-based refunds depending on what, uh, how close we are to race day. So maybe we're within uh, 30 days of race day, like my example here, and I only you can request a refund, sure, but you're only going to get 50% of your um, of your funds back. And then within seven days of race week, on my example, you'll get 25%. So you can set up those options here to make sense for kind of how you would like to allow your participants to request their refunds. And um, you can also set up conditional refunds within this tool. And conditional refunds is a, uh, a tool that allows a participant to request a refund if somebody registers um, to take their place in the race. Um, this is sort of broad and it's why you can uh, change the verbiage for request refund. You know, that's the, the text that they would uh, that they would see in their profile. Maybe this that request refund doesn't necessarily make sense if this is, you know, something that um, somebody is request is, is signing up for it on the condition that somebody registers after them and takes their place. So you can customize that to be kind of however you would like to display that. But that's a that's a really interesting and, and cool tool that you can use for participant management uh, purposes. Um, it works in a similar way. It's kind of a broader version of our uh, bib transfer or participant transfer. Um, that's That exists within the uh, participant transfer section of the, part of the uh, participant management tool where somebody could request a refund um, or I'm sorry, share uh, a link, a registration link with a friend or you know someone that they know. And then once somebody would register through that link, um, the original participant would be refunded and the new person would be registered for the race. Um, that's another uh, another tool that exists that's kind of automatic refund. Um, 
be able to, you can specify whether that's a full refund or, or not uh, as well in charge of processing fee for it. Um, full refunds are a box that are, are it's kind of popular within, or not popular, but common within automatic refunds. And what that term means is um, it will include the run sign up processing fee in the refund. Um, your, you guys aren't really paid that. That, that, that's money that comes to run sign up as part of the transaction. So when you choose to issue a full refund, yes, you're giving your participant back all the money that they paid, but you're also kind of eating into your own race profits to pay that processing fee. So it's uh, something to, to keep in your mind when you're setting up these refunds. And then like most of these refunds, you can also choose to include the add-on purchase amounts or not include the add-on purchase amounts with their self-serve refunds. Um, Self-serve refunds are a great way to kind of speed up your customer service if you just want to provide some options for your participants that get kind of a goodwill um, scenario, so to speak. Um, yeah, like, well, you know, you can get your money back, but uh, maybe you have different, uh, different unique ways that you want to offer that to them. Um, and if you do choose to use, you know, percentage-based refunds or conditional refunds or things like that, or you have kind of unique um, terms for your refunds you should include those in your um, in your refund policy um, the refund policy is displayed on your race website and most importantly it's displayed just above your transaction button so if you have you know a, a special matrix like you know within 30 days you can request a refund but you'll get 50 percent off if you you know or, or 50 percent of your refund back or your registration fees back, that kind of stuff should be in your refund policy. And then you can add a checkbox agree to the policy so that you can make sure that all of your registrants have agreed to that and are aware of it. So I would definitely recommend uh, adding that to your registrations if you do decide to do some like conditional refunds or percentage-based refunds. Um, so moving on from participant management, we also have automatic refunds that can encourage donations uh, or fundraising. Um, so within your uh, donations tool, you can turn on donation discounts, and just like kind of what you what you'd expect, um, you can refund somebody their registration, some part of their registration fee, or some of their registration fee if they meet a minimum donation amount. Um, cool part about that is you can set up multiples of these different refunds. Um, so, you know, maybe you can encourage more donations to receive more of their registration fees back. Um, it's a cool part of the donation tool. Uh, we don't have insure registration balance on this because they're, this is only happening when they're registering um, and they haven't necessarily paid back yet. So um, I also discovered that Google Slides lets you do squiggly arrows. So I uh, hope you enjoy my uh, Nuremberg-esque uh, ring, racetrack-esque arrow there. Um, Cool. Moving on from donation discounts, that's for the standalone donations as somebody is registering for a race. We also can set fundraiser uh, refunds. So I can set a threshold of a certain amount of money that a fundraiser can raise to receive um, a refund back on their, um, on their registration. Um, that insure registration balance box, again, is present for that. If it's zero, it's a free, you know, I can let them have a free race, you know, that we can refund all the way down to zero. Um, if I want to set that at the lowest, my, my lowest discounted price for a, uh, for a race, so I know that's my, my base limit, I can do that too. Um, important distinction here, because fundraisers can be created during registration, but they can also be created outside of registration. Um, in order for a fundraiser to issue a refund, it's got to be linked to a registration ID. And so, and, and the fundraisers have to opt into it when they're registering. So um, you'll notice this box here that I have that says, um, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm aware that you guys are giving me a refund. If I fundraise this much, that's awesome. Uh, I'll check that. And yes, I want to be opted into that, to that refund. Um, and so it's optional. It's uh, something that people um, can, can choose to agree to or not to agree to. Um, so those are the, top, the kind of the different tools that Run Sign Up offers that um, allow refunds. There are some additional parts of refund tools that I want to kind of talk about right now. Um, these things are just common amongst the refunds. So um, first one is that insure registration balance. I wanted to blow it, blow it up nice and big for you. So we can really just make sure that this is kind of an understood term. Um, we get a lot of questions about this uh, as account managers. And so 
the insurer registration balance is basically it's your limit um, for you know when somebody can earn this can earn a specific refund or not. If it's zero, then and somebody can earn that refund at any time. And they can uh, they can receive it all the way down until their balance their registration balance is nothing. Um, typically, the best practice is if you want somebody to have a free race, cool, like set it at zero, let them you know let them go go wild on and on what they want to uh, trigger for refunds. If uh, if you want to set this at the lowest discounted price of your registration, then that's probably a good idea you know that way i know cool this is this is the absolute lowest that i want somebody to be able to race for and that's going to be my insure registration balance for all of my tools that way somebody can continue to fundraise somebody can continue to share their referral uh, uh link somebody can continue to encourage people to join their team but once they're balanced once they've paid for registration and or add-ons if you include that once their balance hits this lowest amount that's it. No more refunds. Um, so cool. Just want to make sure that's very clear. Um, refunds on run sign up are issued out of your chargeback and refund reserve. Um, if you guys want to find that, the navigation path is there at the bottom. Uh, participant management, chargeback, and refund reserve. Um, this is how run sign up issues refunds. We don't just, you know willy-nilly send money back to the card. It has to come out of a pool of money that you set aside as race directors to hold for refunds. Um, if you don't have automatic refunds turned on, then that, you know, the amount of money that you set up in that reserve is up to you. If you do have automatic refunds turned on, we will automatically hold some money into that reserve um, to the tune of like five times the amount of your largest um, event price, just so we can like, actually send those refunds out when they're when they're triggered so we, we send them out of a pool of money that you guys are setting aside in the, in the refund reserve so um, when you go to that page there's a couple of places that you can um, kind of adjust your refund reserve amount uh, the first one is just adding an additional refund reserve so if you want to keep at least a thousand dollars in your refund reserve you can put a thousand dollars in there and then prevent the reserve release until a certain date and save that setting or save the settings and then run sign up will just automatically keep a thousand dollars in that reserve by you know moving some of your money that's transacted into that reserve um, you can also manually add money to the reserve in you know via bank transfer or credit card um, i typically only recommend doing that in like the case of an emergency you absolutely have to send a refund and you need money right now because when you um, add money via credit card we, there is a credit card processing fee associated with it. So that's I mean, you guys would have to pay if you chose to do that. Um, and then the third option is uh, moving money that's waiting to be settled on your payment account. You can see that by going to financial payment account and viewing the money that's waiting to be settled. You can move some of that money into your uh, into your reserve automatically just by clicking that blue button. And then if you want to get some of that money that you've been holding aside for refunds released, um, you can use the release part of the refund reserve tool at the bottom of that page. Um, automatic, like your, your refund reserve will automatically release um, after your race date has passed. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, it should be released to you. Um, we have some reporting. So if you, for all of your refunds that are issued automatically or through participant transfer, we'll keep a track of that in the report. So um, you can kind of view who was refunded, how much they were refunded, and what they were refunded for. Um, I included the kind of the fields of the report here at the bottom, just so you guys can see what's included in the report. Um, you also have a link to the registration, so you can uh, kind of see exactly which what what was happening with the participant. Go look at their registration page. Um, group refunds and fundraiser rewards uh, or fundraiser refunds you can see the pendings of those two by following the links at the bottom of the page so good report there for uh tracking your refunds um when refunds are issued on run sign up uh, through an automatic refund or a participant transfer refund um, the participants will receive a refund confirmation email um, so that email will contain the amount of the refund, the conditions and as to why that refund was issued, and whether or not they're still in the race as an active participant or as a refunded participant. Um, here's just a quick little example of what you know one is that I that I received earlier. So um, 
participants are notified when they're refunded automatically. Cool. And that's a quick and a little quick shot there uh, about automatic refunds on run sign up. A lot of those tools that we talked about today have their own um, have their own help articles and have their own webinars that are actually kind of more in depth about how to set those up. So I'd encourage you guys to go check those out. Um, we just totally revamped runsignup.com, our website. And so our knowledge base, which I tried to put a picture of it here on the right hand side, I think it's kind of good enough. Um, our knowledge base is accessed right there now. And so you can grab all of our support articles, all of our kind of on-demand webinars and our on our blog um, right there on Run Sign Up. So uh, yeah, thank you all for coming and, and listening. And do we have any uh, do you have any questions here that we should talk about? Um, there is one question. It, uh, it says, um, is there a way that a group team refund could be triggered using volunteer sign up as well? Um, is if not, is there a plan for this? No, um, I, group group team refund is in, triggered entirely by people coming in through the sign up button and joining that team type, the group team of the group, um, and join you know specifically joining that group. So it wouldn't integrate at all with um, with our volunteer tool, which is um, set aside from any of the registration stuff. And and I don't know that we've. Um, that I've heard of that being implemented, but um, it'd be a good idea to um, maybe explore. And um, there's some other options maybe that um, that could be used to accommodate that. So um, for that question, it'd be that, that's a great one to to reach out to your account manager with to see if uh, if um, they can get creative with you to find a good solution. That's kind of what we're best at. And that was really kind of it um, with regard to questions. Well, good. Well, anyway, thank you all for uh, for coming. And um, this is, like I said, this is being this was recorded, so you should have a uh, have a copy of this in the next couple of days. Ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, one hundred. Ready or not, here I come. I don't know that you're grasping the rules exactly. Oh, I found you too, here at the end of the video. Hi, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos from us, you can subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, then all. That'll get you alerts whenever we post new videos. If you can give us the old thumbs up, we'd greatly appreciate that. And we'll catch you in the next one.